Expanding columns is a common action in Power Query. It even has its own icon. But there's a problem lurking behind that icon, and that's that when we click it and expand those columns, those column names are hard-coded into the M code, which means if we add new data to our source data, it never gets picked up by Power Query. So in this video, we're looking at how we can expand columns dynamically so that when our source data changes with any new columns, they get picked up automatically. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by taking a look at an example to see what the problem is. To work along with this video, you can download the example file and you can find a link in the descriptions box below. The example file is called 0141 exampleFile.xlsx. In this file, there are four tabs. So we have data for Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And each of these tabs has exactly the same columns, date, item, region, and value. So let's close this workbook and then we'll head over and load it into Power Query. Okay, we're in a new Excel workbook here. I'm going to go to data and then get data from file from Excel workbook. I'll select my example file and then click import. This brings up the navigator window and because we want to connect to the entire workbook, I'm going to click on the folder rather than any of the individual worksheets. So I'll click on the folder and then click transform data. Right, that's now connected to that workbook. You can see that we have our tabs Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And in the data column, click on any of these in the white space, you can see at the bottom the preview of the data in each of those worksheets. We're going to start by renaming our query with complete data. Fantastic. Now let's right click on the column that we want to keep and go to remove other columns. And then we just need to expand our data column by clicking on the icon. We don't want the original name as prefix. And then we can click OK. Fantastic, look at that. Let's just tidy that up. We'll go to transform and use first row as headers. And then we can filter out value. So filters does not equal from our value column. We've got a null here in some of our data sets. So we want where it doesn't equal null. If we look down our data set, everything there looks pretty good. So we'll select those and go to detect data types. So that's date, text, text, and whole number. Fantastic, let's close and load that back into Excel. So home, close and load, close and load two. We'll go for a table on the existing worksheet and then click OK. Right, now let's head back into our source data and add an additional column. So we're back in our example file here in the Q3 tab. I'm just going to paste some data that I've already copied, which means we now have a date, item, region, value, and size on the Q3 worksheet only. Q4, Q2, and Q1 all just have the four columns that we had initially. So we'll save this, close this workbook, and then let's head back into our query workbook. We have our query here, so let's go to data, refresh all, and as you see, nothing happens, but we had a new size column in there, but there's no additional columns that have been included at all. So what's gone wrong? Well, let's head back into our query. We'll click on our expanded data step, and there you can see the issue. So column one to column four have been hard coded in the M code. So that means that even if new columns are added, we will never see them in our data set. We don't even know necessarily that those new columns are there. If we wanted to, we could manually edit our query, but who wants to do that? We want this to happen automatically for us. So in the next section, we're gonna see how we can achieve that. Right, so it's now time for us to create a solution that will work for us in Power Query. I'm going to right click on the expanded data step and then select delete until end. And then we will click delete again. Now there's a function in Power Query that enables us to combine tables and that is the table.combine function. So in our preview at the moment, we just have our data column. 
I'm going to click on the FX icon to create a new step. And then we're just going to use the table.combine. Open the bracket there. We do need to enter our column name, which is data. That's entered in square brackets. And close those brackets and then click away. Fantastic, look at that. Our data has now been expanded. We have column one, column two, column three, column four, and column five. But before we start getting too excited, table.combine has an issue. And that issue is that it removes any existing columns. So let's say we come back one step. We've got our data column. Let's say we wanted our name and our data column. So let's add name back into this query. And now we have our name column and our data column. Well, when we click on our table.combine step, you can see the name column disappears completely. Now this wouldn't have happened if we had expanded our table as we had originally. When we expand, any existing columns are retained. So that means we need to find a solution that brings table.combine and expanding a column into a single action. For this, we're going to use table.columnNames. So we've got our combined table here. If we wrap that in table.columnNames, we now get a list of the column names that exist as a result of the table.combine step. So you can see we have our five columns there. I'm going to copy the functions that we've used. So I'll highlight that and press Control C. Now we can delete our custom one step. We've got our name column and our data column. I'm going to click on the expand icon. We still don't want our original name as prefix. So we'll uncheck that and then click OK. Now, rather than having the column names hard coded into the M code, I'm going to paste the functions that we created previously. Now we could replicate that here paste that over that second section. And when we click away, you can see we have the name column that has been retained and we have each of our five new columns. But if we read the documentation for the table.expand table column function, you'll find out that that last argument is optional. We only need it if we're going to rename our columns. We're not going to do that. So that means we don't need that step. Fantastic. That's done. You can see that we now have our columns as before. So we've got our retained column and also our new column. At this point, we can't promote headers because if we go to transform and use first row, you'll see our first column becomes called Q1. We then have date, item, region, value. But that last column, well, it should be called size because down here we have a size column. So that means we can't promote headers in this way. So what can we do instead? Well, let's come back to our remove other column step. And if we click in the white space for any one of our tables, you can see that at the bottom, that our first row here is our column header. If we could promote that column header in our original data, that means we wouldn't have column one, column two, column three, and column four but instead our columns will be called data, item, region, and value. So let's see how we can achieve this. Now I'm going to make a transformation to the name column, but then adjust it so that it works for the data column. And this is just because I want to use the syntax that's generated by Power Query automatically. So I'll select the name column, then go to format, and let's just say we make that all uppercase, and we'll insert that step. So the syntax I want is table.transform columns. We've then got the name of the previous step. After that, we have the name of the column that we want to adjust. And then we have the name of the transformation that we want to perform. So I'm going to take the data column and I don't want to perform a text.upper. Instead, for each row, I want to perform the table.promote headers. We've used the keyword each here to indicate that it should happen for each row, which means that inside table.promoteHeaders, if I insert an underscore, that will then be applied to each row in our data column. We click away. 
and then let's click inside each of our tables. You can see it's data, item, region, and value. When we come to our Q3, it's data, item, region, value, and size. So now when we come back to our expanded data step, we have all of our column names exactly as we want them. We even have a size column, even though there is nothing there for Q1, Q2, or Q4. Okay, let's select all of our columns and let's detect the data types. So we've got text, date, text, text, whole number, and text. So now if we get a new column, it won't be included in our change the type step, but all that data will still appear inside our data table. So let's go to home, close and load. Right, now let's head over into our example file. We'll add another column and see if this solution works. We're back in our example file again. I'll come to the Q3 tab. I'm going to paste some data that I've just copied. So we now have date, item, region, value, size, and service. I'll save this workbook, I'll close it, and now let's go back into our query workbook and click Refresh All and see what happens. Right, it's time for the big test now. If we click Refresh All, will we get another column? Fantastic, look at that, we now get a service column. You can see that we have our details in there. You can see there's one last item that we forgot to do, which was to add the removal of the null values. So we'll come back into our query. Then in our value column, I'll right click on the null, go to number filters, and then select does not equal. Perfect, home, close and load. Right, that's been loaded back into Excel, and that looks like exactly what we want. Well, that's it. We've seen that Power Query's default expand column behavior is not very dynamic because those column names are hard coded into the M code. But using some Power Query M functions, those table dot functions, we were able to build a completely dynamic solution so that even if new columns get added, they are automatically added to the output in Excel. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.